a perfect problem for your telephonic interviews. And the goal over here is not to solve the problem, but actually how many different solutions can you come up with? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. After that, I'm going to tell you how to think about this problem and how you can solve it in just a constant time. We are going to discuss some multiple solutions. And after that, we'll also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that you understand the problem statement correctly. And I will try to summarize it for you. Basically, you are given two strings and you have to determine if you can construct this first string using the letters that are available in the second string. For example, in my first test case, I only have the letter B in magazine. So can you use it to construct A? No. So the answer to this test case will be false because it is not possible. Let us look at the second test case now. You have two characters available this time, A and B. And can you construct this ransom note? Once again, the answer over here will be no, because ransom note has two A's, correct? And magazine has only one A available. That brings us to the next condition that we're given in our problem. Each letter can be used only once. So you can use this A to cover one of the A's, but again, one more A is remaining. So this conversion is also not possible. Once again, the answer will be false. This now brings us to the final test case and which is valid. I have these letters available, A, A and B. And now can you construct this ransom note? Yes, because you had two A's available and they were available in the magazine. Notice that you don't have to worry about any of the extra characters that are available. B is available, right? But it is not necessary that you use it. So that is the only edge case that you need to be careful about when coming up with a solution. Over here, you can construct this string. So the answer to this test case will be true. It is now quite obvious that a brute force solution to this problem will take up a lot of time. In a brute force solution, you will look at a character and count how many times you are getting it in your ransom note. For example, you get the character A two times. Then you will look at your next string magazine and count, okay, how many times do I get the same character? If you get it more than or equal to the same count, then you can construct it. Similarly, you will go on to the next character that is available, then the next, then the next. So this will end up taking a lot of time. Definitely, we want an optimized approach. As I said before, there are multiple ways to solve this problem and you want it to be fast. You know that since this is a string, so you will have to iterate through all the characters at least once. That means the fastest way will be order of n, where n is the total number of characters. But what about space? How do you optimize for it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take up an array of 26 places because the English alphabet has 26 characters, right? So I have all of these available. Zero represents a A, one represents a B, two represents a C, three is D and it will go and on. So 24 is Y and 25 is Z. So now you know what index each character is representing. To begin your solution, what you will do is you start looking at the magazine string. And now you will determine how many occurrences you have for each character. Initially, all of these values will be zero. And now I am iterating over my string. What do I get? I get an A. What I'm now going to do is I will iterate over each character in my magazine string. The first character I get is A. And what does A map to? A maps to the zeroth index. What I'm going to do is I will go to this position and increment the count by one. Instead of a zero, I now have one over here. It means I have one occurrences of A. Now go ahead. The next character is also A. Go to this particular position and increment the count. So what happens is this one changes to two. What is the next character? It is B. Go to this position and increment the count. Initially it was zero and now it becomes one. Go to the next character now. And this time you get an S. Where will S lie? S will lie somewhere over here, right? and it will be the 18th position. For 18, this will represent a S and what I can do is I can just add a one over here. Similarly, for the next character, I again get an S, so I increment it. Then you get a Y, so I have Y over here, I increment it. Then I have a H, 
H will be somewhere around 7th position. Next, I have a S again. So, increment it. And then I have a H again. So, I'm going to increment this value. You are now done iterating over your entire magazine stream. And you have stored all of the information that you needed in this array. But how do you utilize it? In the first iteration, you were incrementing each of the positions, correct? Now is the time that you iterate over your ransom node. What is the first character? You get an A. So once again, arrive at this position. Since this value is 2, it means that I can decrement something. I can consume one A. So all I do is I decrement my count now. The next character is again A. So I land up over here and decrement it. As long as it is reaching up to zero, it is fine. You don't have to worry. Now go ahead. The next character is B. You land here and you decrement it. The next character is S. So you reach over here. The value is three and you decrement it. Then you have a Y. Y is one. So you can decrement it. And then you have an H. You can decrement this value as well. You don't have any more characters remaining. So you were able to consume every character. So in this example, you can return true as your answer. But what happens in an invalid test scenario? For example, let us assume that this string had one more character A over here. What will you do now? You will look up this character and go in your array. What do you find? The value is already zero. You don't have anything to consume from. As soon as this happens, you can just stop right over here and return a false as your answer because you won't be able to construct your string. What did we just do over here? We just did one iteration of our magazine string and that took us order of n time, correct? And what about the space? I took a constant space because no matter the input size, this array size will always be 26. So what I'm doing? I was able to solve it in a space complexity of order of one or constant space. This solution works perfectly and it will pass all of the test cases. Now, your interviewer might ask you, Okay, this is a very good solution. What other solutions can you come up with? And this is just a test about how many other data structures do you know about? How can you think more? They just want to make sure that you're not just learning up a solution and trying to present them to you. You want to explore. That is where you can talk about another solution as well. And that involves the use of a data structure and that is called a hash map. And the idea is very, very similar. You initialize your hash map and it is currently empty. There are no characters available. Once again, you will iterate over your magazine string. And for every character that you get, first of all, you will check, is it available in my hash fit? A is not available. So what I do is I add A in my hash fit and I put its frequency to be one. Move on to the next character. It is A again. Look up in your hash fit. It is available. So this time you will increment its frequency. So A now becomes to be two. Similarly, you will go on. You next get a B. So this gets added. Next, you have an S. So this gets added. You have an S again. So you increment the frequency. Then you have a Y. Then you have a K. Then you have an H. Then you have an S again. And then you have an H again. This is how my frequency map looks like. I know how many times or how many letters do I have to consume from? Now look back at your ransom note. And what do you want to do? You will want to iterate over each of these characters one by one. Look up in your hash map. If this character is available, check its frequency. You have an A available and its frequency is two. It means you can use one of it. So you decrement it and its frequency becomes one now. Go over to the next character. It is A again. Once again, it is available. So you decrement its frequency and now it becomes zero. As soon as it becomes zero, what you can do is you can completely remove it from your map. It means I don't have any more A's to consume from. So what if there was one more A available in the string? You will now try to check is the A available? No, it means you cannot construct this ransom note from the string magazine. And that is where you can stop. If this A isn't available, what will you do? You will continue on for each of the character and you will look up in your map. If you find it, decrement it. If you do not find it at all, just return a false as it is not present. For example, if you had a character X, X is not available in my map. It means I can return a false.
Again, this solution also works. And this is just an example how you can use the hash map data structure. What is the time complexity? Since you iterate over the string only once, the time complexity will be order of n, where n is the length of your larger string. And what will be the space complexity? The space complexity will again be order of 1. Because no matter what is the input size, the maximum size of your hash map, that can be only 26 rows. That is the length of the English alphabet, correct? So once again, it is constant space. And it is a good idea that you have a chat with your interviewer. What all numbers or what all digits or what other characters are possible? That way, you might have to choose, okay, will you use a character array that we did in the first place? Or you will use a hash map. Because if you can have any special symbols as well, then you cannot have an array approach. You don't know what characters to account for. Or now when you're using a hash map, then you can just take up any special symbol and add it to your map, correct? It can be at the root of symbol, it can be an exclamation mark, it can be a pound sign, anything. So this hash map solution is kind of versatile when your input set has a lot of special characters. So just a few things that you must keep in your mind. Based upon the solution using an array, let us quickly do a dry run of the code. On the left, I have the complete code that will implement your solution. And on the right, I have these two strings that are passed in as an input parameter to the function can construct. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, I create an integer array and its count is 26. It means that I will have all of the values initialized to zero and I will have 26 spaces available. Notice that it is a constant space, correct? And now what do you do? First of all, you need to iterate over every character in your magazine string. So you iterate over each of them and notice how we get the index. You take up the character and subtract the ASCII value of the character A. So if my first character is A itself, I do A minus A and that will give me the index zero. Correct? It means I need to look at this particular position. What if the character was B? I do B minus A. It looks up the ASCII value and it will give me a 1. Similarly, if it is Z, so I do a Z minus A and this will give me the value 25. That is how I can easily reference each of these positions in my array. In the first iteration, what you're going to do, you will populate each of the member of your array. So A is 2, B is 1, and so on. You get the idea. You are now done constructing your array. And now is the time to check if your ransom node can be constructed. So once again, you start a for loop. And this time, you are iterating over each character in your ransom node. And we will apply the same approach. We check this particular condition, C minus character A. It lands me at the correct index. So for this character A, I will do a minus a and that gives me a zero. So I'm checking what is the value at this particular index. If this value is greater than zero, it means I can consume from it. So what I do, I consume from it and I do a minus minus. If this value is zero, it means I am exhausted. I cannot consume any more characters and I can simply return a false. You don't have to check for any of the remaining characters. However, if you were able to iterate through the entire string, and did not exhaust. Then you can end your loop and what happens at the very end? You can return a true because you're not worried about any of the extra characters that are remaining. You can simply say that, yes, I was able to construct my string. I hope the solution is now pretty much clear to you. And when it comes to telephonic interviews, you need to act fast and you need to be quick as well. One trick that you can use is you can try to ask some probing questions to your interviewer. That gives the impression that you're trying to understand the problem correctly, while in your mind, you're getting some time to think about different solutions. So did you face any problem while going through all of this? And what other solutions can you come up with? Just tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. It will also become a very good collection of all the different solutions possible. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority applied to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.